Mm -hmm. Brr, we're back. Okay. So we have the lights for me? Yeah. Thank you. Six minutes, six minutes. All right, guys, we have six minutes to do this video. We're going to do it. We're going to do it fast. Okay, so we have those three fantastic energies that we have now accounted for, for those energet energetics of ionic bonding, ionization, electron affinity, lattice energy, boom, covalent bonding. So we know that in ionic bonds, we have a transfer of electrons, but in covalent bonds, it's different because we're actually sharing a pair of electrons in a covalent bond. Now, remember we said that there could be an equal sharing or there could be an unequal sharing where we get dipoles that are created. So in a polar covalent bond, that's where we have an unequal sharing. So in polar covalent, we will get dipoles. In a nonpolar covalent bond, um, that's where we have an equal sharing and we will not have any dipoles present in um, a nonpolar covalent bond. There are several electrostatic interactions in a covalent bond. So we have attractions between the electrons and the nuclei. We have the two nuclei are going to repel one another. We also have repulsions of um, electrons and we have those pretty much in um, repulsions between electrons in, in any atom. Um, but those are the three in, uh, electrostatic interactions that we're going to see very prevalently in a covalent bond. So we can think very easily in terms of covalent bonding if we just think about maybe like a hydrogen molecule. And a hydrogen molecule would be like the simplest example of a covalent bond if we're thinking about H2. Um, when the two atoms come close to each other, the two nuclei are going to repel one another, right? Because the two nuclei um, both have positive charges, we're going to have some repulsion. We also know that electrons are going to repel, but the nuclei and the electrons are going to have some form of attraction. So we may have some repulsion, but we also have some attraction going on as well. And because the molecule is stable, because H2 is a stable molecule, we know that the attractive forces have to come overcome all of these repulsive forces. So even though we have a repulsion between electrons and even though we have repulsion between the two nuclei, so I have repulsion between these two here, um, in, in sum, the attraction between the nuclei and then all of the electrons that are around it are much stronger than any type of repulsive force. Um, if we look at electron density distribution, then we can see that the attraction between the nuclei and the electrons cause the electron density um, to concentrate between the nuclei. So if we're looking at this, this would be a really good example of an electron density map. Um, I have all of these little blue dots, and those blue dots are representing the paths of the electron, so that's where I can find an electron. Um, they're more heavily populated or shaded blue around the nucleus, should make sense because they're wanting um, to be around the nucleus, negative, positive, we have that attraction there. But we also can see that we have um, electron density between these two nuclei. It's because these electrons over here are being pulled to this nuclei or they can also feel a pull or an attraction to this one. So if you look so closely, and maybe you'll have to look in your book at this, but you can actually see kind of a, a higher density here in between those two nuclei, and that is your covalent bond. That would be where we're sharing um, those electrons. Okay, so nonpolar versus polar covalent. In terms of bond polarity for covalent bond, we would classify something as being polar or being nonpolar. So we said that a polar covalent bond would be where there's unequal sharing versus a nonpolar, which would be um, equal sharing. So I have fluorine, we know fluorine F2 diatomic. I have all of this looks pretty much equally shaded because this is showing you that I have an equal sharing of electrons. Um, if I look at hydrogen fluoride though, I see different shading here with the colors because fluorine is going to be attracting the electron more so than hydrogen is. So I have a difference in color representation here because there's an unequal amount of sharing of that electron pair between hydrogen and fluorine. And we know fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, so fluorine pulls harder on the electrons that it's sharing with hydrogen. Um, therefore, we say the fluorine end of the molecule has more electron density than the hydrogen end. Last year, we also said that polar covalent bonds have 
partial positive or partial negative charges. So the one that would have a partial negative charge would be the one that's more electronegative, meaning that it's the one that will pull the electrons in closer to itself. It's attracting more electrons. So in that case, fluorine would have the partial negative charge. Hydrogen isn't taking that electron or that pair of electrons in as closely as fluorine, so hydrogen must have my partial positive charge. Talking about electronegativity, let's segue right on here. We said that electronegativity is the ability of atoms in a molecule to attract electrons to themselves. Um, if we look here, just general trend, it will increase from left to right. So as I'm moving towards halogens, it's increasing. That should make sense because as we're moving towards the halogens, we know the halogens really, really, really want an extra electron. So they're going to attract those electrons. Um, we know that the oxygen family wants two electrons, so they'll attract two electrons. So it should make sense. It should increase this way. And then it will also increase from the bottom to the top. And we can think about it decreasing from top to bottom. Okay, so still thinking about um, electronegativity and bond polarity. We can kind of use these representations here to gauge the difference between um, the polarity and bonds. So F2 would be a representative of a nonpolar covalent bond because I see that they're sharing those electrons equally. Hydrogen fluoride would be a polar covalent bond. I see that fluorine is going to um, kind of take those that pair of electrons and attract it a little bit more than hydrogen will. Lithium fluoride, I have a complete transfer over here of that electron to fluorine. So fluorine is just completely taking that electron and not really sharing it so much at all with lithium. So the greater the difference in electronegativity between two atoms, the more polar their bond will be. Um, and I'll give you, I think, a gauge maybe on... We'll do a gauge with this on um, Monday after Thanksgiving break. So I would like you for Mon for tomorrow, for Tuesday, I want you to answer this question for me, and I'm going to check this first thing Tuesday morning or whenever I have you. Tuesday whenever we get to class. Have a great day. Bye.